Fear the Lord has a couple of really good questions here and uh, so let me I'll read them for you and uh, see if I can give you an answer that makes sense for you. Fear of the Lord says, Why are Cain and Abel missing from the genealogy of Adam? All right, so that's a good question, right? Why are Cain and Abel missing from the genealogy of Adam? Um, well, let's first of all, I guess, go to the genealogy of Adam in the book of Luke chapter 3 and here at the end we see um, which was the son of Enos which was the son of Seth which was the son of Adam which was the son of God alright so um, let me just point something out here that's I think critical to this genealogy if I can find it all right um, oh I went too far go way 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 too far okay right there right there that's the key right there which was the son of no which no is Noah all right so think about this the lineage from Adam to Noah went through Seth. All right. So, uh, in regards to Cain and Abel, Abel was killed by Cain, and then of course after Cain did that, he uh, went off and uh, started his own family, his own city, and so the direct lineage from Noah to Adam was through Seth and not through Cain. All right, and so that's why uh, Cain and Abel's not mentioned in this genealogy. All right, so it's simple as that, that uh, Cain, Abel, and Seth were all uh, siblings of, and they were all sons of Adam. Okay, um, and right there I think that's the key, Noah. So that's a good question, and that's why the lineage is going through Seth to Noah. And then, of course, from Noah to everybody living today, <clears throat> excuse me, is, uh, you know, where our lineages go back to, right? Because Noah and his three sons and their wives were all saved during the flood, and therefore, all all of our lineages go back to Noah, and of course, they all go back to Adam as well. Okay. Now, the other question: Why did Eve's punishment focus on sexual reproduction? All right. So you know, I th I think that you know that's a good question. I think you have to consider. Uh, the fact that, first of all, they didn't have knowledge of good and evil until they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then once they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they had knowledge of good and evil, and therefore they were susceptible to sin. And because they are susceptible to sin, God had to make them reproduce because... If you think of um, Adam and Eve had a chance to be perfect and they blew that opportunity to be perfect and therefore because of that all of mankind needs a savior uh, in a way uh, to be perfect if you will and of course it is through Eve's seed in a sense that because she's a woman um, you know after a while here comes Mary a virgin and she bears uh, she uh, she has a child who is the Lord Jesus Christ who is the Savior 
for us. So because they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that therefore means that Adam and Eve needed a savior. All right, because of that introduction, if you will, of evil. And therefore, the only way that we can be perfect is if there is no evil in us. And of course, we can't do that ourselves. Only God can do that. And so, God ultimately offers His Son as a sacrifice for all sin, that through Him we have eternal life. You know, I hope that's not too complex, but I think the bottom line is that, um, you know, Eve, Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and because they had that knowledge of good and evil, you know, you can't, you can't, you know, you can't be perfect, right? Because you got that knowledge of good and evil, you're going to commit that sin of evil, if you will. I hope that makes sense. I really do. And I think it's really that simple. Because they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is why uh, there was this necessity for reproduction. Right, and therefore, because of that reproduction, uh, that ultimately led to the Son of God, Jesus Christ, being born of the Virgin. I think this is God foresaw the whole thing from the beginning, and He sees the end as well. And so, this is all part of God's plan. Uh, and what we're reading here, like for example, in Genesis three, is. Uh, another just a, one of many examples that we're not perfect and that we need a savior really because there's failure after failure after failure in the Bible when man tries to do it on his own or when man is at least given the opportunity to do it on his own time and time again man fails Adam and Eve failed the people of Noah's time failed they were living nearly a thousand years and they had every opportunity to do it themselves without the intervention of God they couldn't do it they just become wickeder and wickeder right and so God tore down the whole thing and said okay all right now I'm gonna start over and this time I'm gonna introduce laws and through Moses the law was introduced and time and time again men failed <laughs> and so therefore the law was put there to lead us to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and now once faith has come we are no longer under a schoolmaster now we are born of the Spirit of God and the Spirit of God guides us and then of course ultimately the end of the world will come and then everything will change once again like everything changed after the flood of Noah there was the world being destroyed by water now is coming the time when the world will be destroyed by fire and then after that is those of us that are saved will be given a new body a glorified body uh, a body in which we will never die okay uh, I hope that makes sense I think that's a great question I think both of these are great questions so thank you for that all right you have any follow-ups please let me know